What's going on everybody? I'm Will Button. This is DevOps for Developers. And in this video, we're talking about the five things I wished I had known before I started my tech career. So knowing these things could have landed me my first $100,000 job years sooner, but no, I had to go do it the hard way and find these things out through years of trial and error. And these are the skills used by top engineers at companies like Apple and Amazon and Netflix and Google and Facebook. So stick around and learn these from me so you don't have to find them out the hard way. All right, tip number one, your technical skills. Eh, wrong answer. Now this is where I got into a lot of trouble, right? Because I thought, hey, I'm gonna work in tech. Obviously my technical skills are the most important thing to focus on. But that's not actually true. The reason is because you have to have soft skills in order to get to a point where you can actually talk about your technical skills. And even beyond that, you know, you need soft skills so that you can handle conflict in the workplace and that you can negotiate for yourself. Speaking of which, be sure and check out this video on negotiation if you haven't. You also have to be able to advocate for your ideas and learn like how to read people and how to size people up, find out what makes them tick, what their motivation is, and use that information in order to communicate more effectively and advocate for your ideas. Remember, everyone at the company is there because they're getting a paycheck from it. And sometimes that causes people to behave differently whether that's good or bad is not relevant. Just understand that that's the case and use that to your advantage. Final thing on your soft skills is remember the words of the wise philosopher Ozzy Osbourne. Remember who you meet on your way up the ladder because you're going to meet them again on your way down. Tip number two, go wide, then go deep. And what I mean by that is early on in your career, you want to strive for a broad foundation to understand how all these different pieces of tech work together. Things like UI and UX and front end and back end and networking, security, databases, infrastructure, cloud, all of that stuff. You don't have to become an expert on it. Just study it enough to understand how it ties into the big picture. Doing so has two benefits. One, you're gonna have this big foundational knowledge so you kind of understand what it is you're working on. The other is it's gonna expose you to all of those different areas, teaching you a little bit about them so that you can figure out which one you like best or which one you're most suited for. And then that's the one that you go deep building your expertise on. Remember, you can afford not to be an expert in all topics, but you can't afford to have large knowledge gaps. So remember that. Tip number three, life has its ups and it's downs, we call those squats. Look, working in tech, you're gonna spend a bunch of time sitting at your desk. It's a very sedentary role. So the longer you sit at your desk, the more your physical health declines. Now here's why it's important to you because the more that your physical health declines, the more that that impacts your mental capacity and your ability to sit, think about, and solve problems which is actually why you're getting paid. So get up and move. Treat your fitness, your mental health, your physical health, and your nutrition important because they are, because they're the foundation of how you're able to earn your living. I can tell you from personal experience, you're gonna have good days and bad days. Here's the thing to remember though, a bad mood cannot survive in a squat rack. And what I mean is, you put a bar on your back and you start doing squats in the squat rack, either you have to quit doing squats or the bad mood has to go away. The two physically cannot coexist. I'm pretty sure that's one of Einstein or Newton's laws of physics. I mean, I don't remember which one, but I know one of them said it. The last thing, um, call it judgmental, call it narcissistic, whatever you want to do. It's certainly not perfect, but people will judge you based on appearance. And look, that's a flawed theory, but it happens, we're humans. So if you look like you have your shit together, then people will assume you have your shit together. 
So that's just another reason to take your health seriously. Last thing on this, don't let perfection be the enemy. You may not be able to afford a gym membership right now. I get it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying go get a gym membership. I'm saying get moving. That means go outside and run. Go outside and go for a walk. If you're not at a stage where you can run yet, um, drop down beside your desk and do some push-ups, sit-ups, burpees. Whatever you can do, take the time to do it. Tip number four, make a map. And the way you make a map is think about your future 10 years from now. Write down what your lifestyle looks like, what you do, where you live, what your day looks like, and then work backwards to today and break it down to smaller and smaller tasks. When you get to today, that's your to-do list for the day. Now, here's where a lot of people get tripped up on this. You may not know all of the steps to get there. And that's totally cool because that's part of navigation. When it comes to navigation, you look where you want to be on the map and you start going that direction. And then as you progress along that path, you learn more about the terrain and you adjust course as necessary. So that's important to remember, set your destination, but also be prepared to adjust course as necessary. The most important thing is to have a destination and to be tracking towards it. One of the ways you can do this in a tech career is early on in your career, say yes to everything. Someone says, hey, can you do this? Even if you have no idea how to do it, say yes and then go figure it out. It's gonna show you a lot about the tech. It's gonna give you a lot of experience. It's also gonna color in a lot of those sections of the map that you don't know about. And also continuously learn, be continuously upgrading your skills. At 52, I've been in tech for three decades now and I still learn new things every day. So the destination can always be changing, just always be moving towards it. Last one, tip number five, what would The Rock do? And by that, I mean, it's important to look like a professional, act like a professional, talk like a professional in all cases. Avoid gossip, don't talk bad about people, and then strive to keep harmony in the team. You know, be that person that people look up to, that they respect, and that people confide in because they know you're not going to talk shit regardless. That's an important characteristic to have. It builds your network. It makes you a trustworthy person. And whenever people trust you, they want to work with you more. The last thing on this, continuously update your skills, which I already said. But also, if you see the industry going somewhere, get there first. So whenever the rest of the industry shows up, you're there, you've got everything worked out and you're ready to get down to work. So following these tips will help you build a great career. Hopefully they'll shave off years of your career progression that I spent the hard way. Um, if you want to know more about how all of these different things tie into DevOps and software development, be sure and check out the roadmap. I've got a link to it down below. It's really great for identifying all these different pieces of career development and figuring out where each of them fit based on what you currently know. So check that out and then I'll see you in the next video.